wow, this place is big and full and kind of spooky and really crazy. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. Well, the Highway 25 sale is more hit or miss, but these folks put an ad on Craigslist saying that they had old stuff and antiques and vintage inside this old priceless grocery store. So let's look. Ooh boy, this is a place. I don't know if the way that this smells can actually be sensed through the video, but it smells like this hasn't been open for a really long time. This is more like the kind of picker digs that I'm used to doing when a dealer's death pile has gotten out of hand. Wow. The question is, how picked is this pile? Anything linen is going to smell bad, so that's out. Um, you know, you kind of want to look and see if you see anything decent right on the surface. And I do, so I think I will spend a little time. This piece, for example, is American East Lake. So this is 1870s, and it's pretty wrapped up, but it looks like it's wrapped up in a good way. And the fact that somebody stupidly nailed it to something is even better because it's going to look like hell, and I bet they're not going to charge a lot. We'll see. This could be great for use at a show. This will clean up. It could be painted because the finish is so bad. Yeah, if this is cheap, this is something I can use. Honestly, it's also a good way to kind of test and see what things they think are valuable. Well, I got my answer. That was six bucks, so I'm going to dig. I get the feeling I'm not the only person digging. I do hear something in the far back. Wow, this place is big and full and kind of spooky and really crazy. Needle barrel. Another big, huge thing. They've got a bunch of old whiskey barrels, actually. Wow, there's just piles and piles and stuff. This would take a month to go through. And I'm sure a lot of it is just junk. Looks like they just sort of got estate leftovers and just shoved them in here. Okay, now here's a piece I've sold before. Usually has a pillow, but I like to make them into tables. And I bet this is really cheap too. This would be a Florida thing. It's sort of golden girlsy rattan. I know it's kind of hard for you folks to see it here. My camera's doing the best it can. I don't think they've got Captain Crunch anymore. I see in here there's an old metal porch glider, and you know I like these. The thing is, is that boy, I need the flashlight of the phone to see this stuff, so I'm realizing I gotta set myself up differently to, if I'm gonna stumble across places like this. Books and paper are not gonna be good in the old environment. This place clearly has had a lot of leaks. Here's this glider. I have to say it's pretty cool looking and it's not huge and it's got aluminum so it's not going to be as heavy. I'm interested. My bet is again prints and pictures are likely to not be in good condition. Upholstered furniture, there's a lot of stuff to avoid in this kind of a hoard. But there's certainly things of value. I mean these old shop cabinets would sell if it was an estate sale situation. Whew, daylight in the back of the store. Somebody is digging in the way back there. It is a lot of furniture and then just boxes and boxes of whatever. And there might be some good whatever, but, you know, clearly I'm not in a position. I was not. When they said, oh, there's some antiques in the back in their ad, they kind of underplayed the general situation here. <laughs> I gotta follow that guy because his phone actually can work as a flashlight. At least the camera lights things up a little bit, but you can tell just sort of looking at the quality of the glass and the things that are here that this is not going to necessarily be a lot of the greatest stuff. So for smalls, maybe not too terrific, although this is kind of neat. It looks like it was out of some old restaurant. 
but bigger items, there are a few here that seem like they might be worth having. I like this candle stand over here. Let's see what condition it's in. These are good sellers, depending. It looks like it may have a lot of losses in boy with the cobwebs. It looks like something straight out of the Adams family home. It's pretty awesome in that regard, but it's pretty not all there as well. If it wasn't all rusted, these arms would actually come up and you could adjust it and it would have all the, yeah, well, it was cute at one time. Somebody was repurposing this at one point. It could actually be interesting. Again, in a very macabre oddity sense, that's actually a pretty neat piece. I think I got to bring it in closer so that we can see stuff. I don't think we're going to find any sterling left in here. I'm sure that, again, this is probably a dealer and see even the furniture, a lot of it's really moldy now. It's too bad. Nice little wash stand. It could be saved, but it would take a lot of cleaning. Ooh, do these guys glow in the dark? I bet they do. Guys or guy or, or gal. Well, it's a full one and then part of another. Okay, this guy is great. Let's see if it has any vintage though. I think this is older. It may be phosphorescent plastic. Wow, this is a fun spooky place. Yeah, I think he has enough age. I would I would definitely think that this guy might be interesting to somebody. He certainly hung out here long enough for something to happen. Kind of a nice candle sconce hanging upside down. It is metal, but is it old? It's pretty thin. Mm, these big hoops that are made in mean this is pretty contemporary. You see how that construction is there? That's a clue. So, not for me. Well, this certainly is going to be one of the strangest places I think that we're going to find along this route. The old wheelbarrow is neat with the cast iron wheel there. Those sell as lawn art. Here's where you would have to make an appointment and come back with a flashlight, with gloves. You know, there could be spiders and things. Brown recluses like to live in boxes. You don't want to just dive into this when you're not prepared. Unfortunately, I certainly wasn't expecting this. Like I say, they're absolutely undersold. <laughs> Little strawberry hook is cute. I don't know if it's truly vintage or not. Although I get the feeling most things in here have sat for some period of time. Is this Los Angeles pottery? It may be. Let's take a look at the back. Oh, it certainly is. Okay. They tended to do big bowls and things like this, and I just sort of recognize their paint. It's hard to read, but Los Angeles Potteries is the mark there. I think they made neat stuff. It was large. It has sort of that Italian hand-painted feel to it. You know, if this was cheap, I suppose I'd take it. Well, we're getting up a little closer to the front where you can see things just a little bit better. And, you know, there's obviously some functional items in here. More furniture. More of everything. I mean, this is just a nutty hoard. It also might be a good idea to bring a mask in here gloves. You really can toxify yourself around some of this stuff, especially when it's been let to sort of sit and rot and mingle for a while. So I'm going to be specific about what I look at here, but I'm glad I'm not the only one. The fact that that young man in the back there is walking around means he's clearing out some of the cobwebs in advance. I'm getting a few of them myself. I can feel it on my legs. This is really something, folks. Aha, uh -huh, auction signs. I'll bet they used to be auctioneers. I had these auction signs and sold them last year. I would sell them again. Well, I pulled out a couple of auction signs and I wonder if this fellow was going to auctions or conducting auctions. The guy gave us flashlights to look around with, although I have to say the flashlights may have come out of here because they're pretty dim, but it's better than nothing. So that's gonna help. We'll make another pass through here. This guy's got a flashlight, so maybe I'll have to follow him. But first I'm gonna look up here where it's a little easier to see. You know, again, with things so deep and lots of stuff that is hard to get to and things like this on the floor, you have to be really careful what you're doing in a place like this. And I'm not well equipped. 
So I'm not going to go crazy trying to unbury things, but I'm going to look at stuff that jumps out at me from the pile. This is a nice enough old frame. I don't usually buy just frames, but I am finding a lot of people are interested in these. It's been repainted, a little damaged in the corner. This thing says compact. I'm curious about what its original use was. Oh, there's a Duncan Canterbury, and this would have been the tray. You would have had a oil and vinegar and a salt and pepper that sat in there. Compact. Ooh, this looks like maybe a piano. Oh yes, the compact organ. Well, these eventually took over the world. I mean, you can't sell a big piano now because the new versions of these have taken over. But this is interesting that it's an old one, probably with lots of tubes and stuff. I imagine for somebody who knew how to fix it, it'd be a great player and probably have an interesting sound if you wanted to do maybe surf music or garage band 60s stuff. It looks like it's from that era. Instead of departments, they have cabinets in Kentucky. So they're not saying that that cabinet is the cabinet. It's a first aid kit. They're saying the state of Kentucky's transportation department has issued this first aid kit. And that makes it kind of interesting, especially if I took it out of state where people haven't seen it before. It doesn't look tremendously old. I'm guessing maybe 1980s. Does it have any dates on it? August 3rd of some year. There's the whiskey barrels where we can see them a little better. So much stuff. Is that supposed to be the bushes? I'll tell you, after seeing the condition of this place, my little sale on June 24th and 5th during the Highway 41 sale at my storehouse in Kentucky is going to be so neat and clean and organized by comparison. You'll be able to get to the stuff and see it, and it'll be cheap. I imagine this will be cheap too. It certainly better be because of the way it's been left here for so long. We'll find out when we talk to the guy. Could be he's some old guy who's done this forever and is in love with all this stuff. But I have a feeling at this point, when you have 20 saws in a box, you might be letting go. Neat brass bed under there, sort of a two-toning, the way that they did it with the stripes. I haven't seen that on an old brass bed. This is gonna be from about 1900. And it looks like it's big enough to probably hold a full or maybe a queen. Sometimes you can get converters. Well, I think I just achieved one of my bucket list items. It sounds like I'm the new owner of a metal porch glider. I have to rearrange the van to fit this new acquisition. Those were fun glasses when they were new. Looks like a chandelier back there. Cute little applique, but that's gonna smell. Unfortunately, you can see the condition of the roof and everything not so good. Depression glass plates, but they're clear. Whole lot of generic florist glass. 70s, 80s table glass. Dolls that are gonna smell to high heaven. Moldy paper. It is possible there's something great in these boxes. I gotta say, when I don't see anything great on the surface and there's so much and lots of other sales to hit, I'm not gonna necessarily spend time digging through all of this. Well, here we go. Handmade miniature old-fashioned brass bed with mattress. We're seeing brass beds everywhere, but here is a reproduction of the antique original. Just like from the farm, a collector's must. Let's see if it's even in here. No, but some little penny toys are. Hey, this is good. Oh, yeah. Oh, she has her head broken. That's too bad. She's especially cute. And it says Nippon on the back. I would have really liked to have saved her, but 
These seem okay. These are marked Germany and their little heads move. Those are good. And that's jointed. She's okay. Funny that her arms are not the same color. Someone may have redone that. But this one seems original. Oh yeah, these are great. Glad I looked. It's the thing in a place like this, you really don't know what's in anything. The good thing is that these people obviously have this here and it's not all going away in three days. So I'm sure that maybe we can make arrangements to come back here and really look. More boxes of more, who knows, glass flower frog. People can always use these marble collectors like them to put their stuff in. Pen collectors do too. And then of course some people arrange flowers. It's two bucks. That's an okay price, but I'm gonna see a whole lot more of those through with this. If I don't break it, that would be nice. $19.99. Well that tells us when. This box is packed. Neat old smoking stand. You'd have to find an ashtray that would fit though. Very 1930s and that Federalist Eagle is interesting. Barbie's had better days. That's, I'm not putting my makeup on today, Barbie, except her tattooed part. Of course, once you find something interesting, then you want to keep looking. There's a child size iron bed, like a crib. That's kind of cute. Not sure what you would do with it nowadays, though, other than display. Bunch of random kitchen. I'm hoping maybe there's more little dolly stuff. I see lots of boxes with prints and frames and an old spittoon. Someone's doing some rag picking in the back. If they can get the smell out, I think there's probably something good in that pile, hopefully. Do you just have an eBay store or do you have an online thing? Yeah, um, I use like Macari and Depop. Oh yeah. Yeah, stuff like that. Cool. Mercari's supposed to be really good for it. What's your name on there? Uh, Vintage Drake. Vintage Drake? Cool. I'll look for you. Appreciate it. Well, I appreciate the fact that someone else was in here because I was a little scared at first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, this is how you find stuff, right? Yeah. They said, oh, and there's some antiques in the store out back. I was like, what? <laughs> but I was just driving. It. Yeah, yeah, it just showed up, exactly. Yeah, no, I looked it up. I, I thought, well, I want to look at the ones that have the stuff I know is going to be old. You know, I don't want to look at a bunch of baby clothes all day. So I thought, well, and this is the only one that advertised. And when they said, oh, there's some antiques in the store behind us, I thought, you know, oh, there's going to be six pieces of furniture or something. Uh, Dawson Springs is where I stay when I'm in Kentucky, uh, other side of the state. Yeah, he's got a Oh, he's got a booth at the mall uh, here in Richmond? Yeah, at the mall, yeah. Oh, cool. That, that's crazy. Now, lots of wood stuff, but nothing real old in that one. Let's see if the Santa candles are old and have they survived. They have survived and they are not old. Limited edition? I don't believe that. Sea ride. This one looks a little better done. Funny, I was just talking about MC Escher and here's an Escher print right in front of us from about 1980. I think it's really cool. It's been under wrap. I wonder if there's any chance. Nope, see the mold's gotten in on it. It's a shame. It's too bad this stuff has been stored so poorly. This one is called Lucht and Wasser, which is 
Sky and Water. He did this in 1938. I just really like it. I'm a big Don Blanding fan too, so I like Silhouette anyway. And the fact that Escher did these really crazy mathematically conscious geometric designs is just really fascinating to me. Well, here's some more dollies. Anybody good in there? Ooh, I see a planter. Okay, well, a bunch of boring florist planters. And one green one that I see has a chip. There's a bunch of crystals. I mean, I'm sure these are inexpensive, but do I need a bunch of clear glass crystals? Eh, if it was other shapes, I'd be more inclined. I mean, people can use these for replacement. Maybe I'll grab a handful and see if he's inexpensive. Yeah, I got a lot of stuff in here. How'd this all get here? Very careful. <laughs> no, I drug it in. <laughs> wow, you've been at it for a long time. Well, the danger in a place like this is that you spend the entire day and that you don't get out in the daylight and you don't get to see any of the other highway sales. So I think I've gotten everything I'm going to do. Where's the camera? <laughs> it's kind of hard to see in here. I think I've gotten everything I'm going to out of here for now, so I'm gonna head on. I can probably get a phone number from him if I wanna come back. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below Click the bell to be notified when new videos upload. Leave a comment below and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at the Antique Nomad. Bye for now.